Hi everyone, in this video I'm printing an RC car with a 3D printer. You can see my Hobby King fabricator printing a pretty large gear there. Well, these gears are getting into the car's chassis, which is also 3D printed. They look like Lego blocks, which I think is pretty cool. Now, this particular piece is the pinion for a model. It turned out that the center hole of the pinion is too large for a model shaft. Lucky for me, I found a plastic tube which is just the right size. It fits in perfectly and grips tightly onto the model shaft. To prevent the pinion from slipping, I attach a screw to the top of the rotating can and have a hole drilled at the base of the pinion to catch the head of that screw. Now there's no way the pinion could free wheel itself even if it loses grip on the model shaft. Okay, so much for the gears. Here are more parts printed for the RC car. On the bottom left, you can see the chassis tray that's splitted in half. This is not a print defect. I altered the original 3D model with Mesh Mixer, a 3D editing software from Autodesk. This is because in its one-piece form, the print will exceed the maximum printing size of my 3D printer. And by the way, all the model files could be found on GitHub. Just Google for Flutter Scout on the internet to download the files for the entire set of parts. This RC car is designed by Alexander Taylor and is the first 3D printed RC car without screws. The parts basically come together, but you can't separate them unless you dismantle them in the reverse sequence of the assembly steps. The main chassis is another part which is too big for my printer. I had to split it in half just like the chassis tray you saw earlier. And here's a printer printing half of the chassis. Since there will be a lot of vibration from the moving parts, using super glue to join the two halves together is a bad idea. So I came up with a solution. I created two side panels and a base plate to reinforce the weak joint. And to embrace the concept of a screwless car, I decided not to use bolts and nuts to attach these parts. Instead, I used good quality double-sided sticky tapes from 3M. The 3M tapes are so strong that I could not separate the two halves, no matter how hard I tried to pull them apart. As for the tires, they have 95mm diameter and 36mm width. I got these neat looking tires for less than $10 from aliexpress.com. For the rims, these are 3D printed, again using the downloaded files. Now for the canopy which stacks on top of the chassis tray. It has to be splitted as well due to the same oversized problem. Note the print orientation in this video. This is to provide a flat and smooth surface for the part where the two halves are joined together with super glue. Finally, after about 50 hours of printing, this is how the car looks like when it's fully assembled. I will upload the files of all my parts so that anyone whose printer is not big enough could download them and have a go at this project. Now let us take a look at the steering mechanism. Here I have decided to use a push rod with metal ball joints as I have spares of them from my radio control helicopter. Unlike using a piece of band wire, I could precisely adjust the length of the push rod to center the front wheel for the servos neutral. At this stage, all that's left for me is to install the electronic speed controller for the model and to get the rest of the electronics and battery onto the chassis tray. Alright, this is how the electronics look like from the inside. I have the two cell LiPo pack here and the electronic speed controller. This is the car ESC from Hobby King. And over here I have the receiver. This is a Wi-Fi receiver for controlling the car with my mobile phone. The receiver has an area and I hook the other end to an SMA connector. This way I could attach a high gain antenna to enhance the Wi-Fi range for radio control. Thank you. 